Coming up next in this special edition of Frontline. I saw kids waving their hands saying, help, help me stay on track. Another school program getting it right. Our students face challenges sometimes that young children shouldn't have to face. I can't tell you how much I worry every time she leaves this building. When she leaves this building, she's on her own. They told me you're bright and you're special. I started to believe that I can do more for myself. Middle school moment begins right now. Two and a half years ago, Omarina Cabrera, a student at middle school 244 in the Bronx, was struggling. My first year here, me and my mom, we got evicted. I felt shattered. That was a home that I had for my whole life, and I grew up there. I didn't know what was gonna happen next. That period of not knowing wasn't something that I felt comfortable with. I felt this inkling in me that I would never want my children or, or anyone else experience this. Shuffled between relatives' apartments, some without even electricity, Omarina suffered another loss. When I was really young, my father walked out for whatever reason. I finally got in touch with him. Just before we were about to talk and I was about to go see him, he had a stroke. And I had to leave to the Dominican Republic and see my father for the first time and it was in a casket. With her home life in chaos, Omarina's school life began to suffer. She didn't know it, but she was starting down a path that so many other young people take. Every year, over a million students fail to finish high school. Even kids in the most dire circumstances really want a future. They just need to have a path to it. For 15 years, Robert Belfans, a leading education researcher, had been studying the population of children who drop out of high school. Then he realized that the key moment when kids begin to go down the wrong path was in middle school. What does that refer to? Stephanie? When a line divides the parabola into two equal parts. If in the middle grades you've developed habits of not coming to school regularly, of getting in trouble, or failing your courses, you bring that with you to high school. And the schools aren't designed to help them succeed. But how do you identify those middle school kids most at risk? What exactly are the warning signs? Balfans and his team harvested data from dozens of high poverty schools, schools where at least 40% of the students qualify for government subsidized lunch. We looked at about 40 different variables and we put that into a big statistical analysis and said we want factors that are highly reliable and also yield a large number of kids in trouble. And within this chaotic tangle of data, the team found something revealing. And basically out of this mix, four came out really strong. And that was our sort of eureka moment. I saw kids waving their hands saying, help, help me stay on track. The data showed that if a sixth grade child in a high poverty school attends school less than 80% of the time, or fails math or English, or receives an unsatisfactory behavior grade in a core course, that absent effective intervention, there is a 75% chance that they will drop out of high school. It may seem far less than rocket science, but it's something that in fact schools have, by and large have not paid attention to. Schools have long collected statistics on absences, behavior, and of course, grades. But many educators don't recognize the significance of those numbers. The principal of middle school 244, Dolores Peterson, is one who did. The Bell France research was so interesting to us because we looked at it and we said, this is a great way to identify our students at a very early stage. Students like Omarina Cabrera, who had been showing up late or not at all. 
at the beginning, I felt alone and I felt ashamed, and I didn't want to speak to anyone about it. I just isolated myself from everything and everyone. But the data spoke for Omarina. Every week at Middle School 244, statistics are collected and reviewed by a team of counselors and teachers. Attendance. Everyone's with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 802. Omarina. How is Omarina doing? The students most in need are flagged. Currently, her mother's not even in the, the United States right now. She was in the shelter not that long ago. Then they were evicted. So she's having to go between relatives. So they and their assigned counselor organizes an intervention. I took her home one day. And it's like a, it's a double commute. It's a bus to a train. It's on the other side of the world, you can say. I can't tell you how much I worry every time she leaves this building. When she leaves this building, you know, she's on her own. Let her know that we're going to support her and keep us posted on what she needs. Our students face challenges sometimes that young children shouldn't have to face. And they need that support of the adult to help them through it. It's all going to work out, and it's just... Catherine like, Miller was Omarina's homeroom teacher. So once Omarina was identified, it was imperative on my part as a homeroom teacher in consultation with the guidance counselor and administration to discuss why she was coming in late so many times. They came to me and they asked me, what's wrong? You've been late a lot. Something has to be wrong. And that's when I told Ms. Miller that I was evicted. Your mother needs to feel safe or she needs to feel good about where you are as do you um, and the best we can do right now we can compile thousands of numbers about who's failing this or who's passing that but if, if there's no response to that data if, if there's no initiative taken to understand that data it's all for naught it became clear that a chaotic home life was the source of Omarina's problem at school and she needed targeted practical support right, so you're gonna take this one today the team helped her figure out routes to school from ever-changing addresses, got her a bus pass and books. Ms. Miller told me that I can break through it, that I'm strong enough, that I'm courage to do it. And the fact that she believed in me, I believed in me. And that's something that not a lot of people go through. They need an adult counterforce. Someone to say, did you get your work done? Let me make sure you understand it and also deal with like, I know you're having trouble with this teacher or that teacher or these kids. Let's work it out, let's solve it now. It's that sense of shepherding is, is what the kids need to know that an adult not only cares, but the adult can actually help them. How's it going at home? It's good, it's not completely settled because of my mom, but I think it's calmer than before. That's great, that's great. And your brothers? Omarina has two brothers, one older and one her twin. My first year here, I had a lot of different things going on. I had my brother who was so smart and he was just like me, he's my twin. My brother began to be exposed to a lot of the things that were out there. And not only him, but a lot of us were, not a lot of kids make the right choice and that is happening a lot of times in the Bronx for a lot of people. In the summer after sixth grade, her twin started hanging out on the streets and getting in trouble. His mother had him transferred to another school, thinking he'd be safer in a different neighborhood. But today, O'Marlin rarely attends school, and his future seems uncertain. When am I going to go to high school? I don't know. I haven't got my letter yet. I'll be something. The fact that he got involved with the streets and the fact that he let the neighborhood influence him, he just began slipping off the mountain, slipping off, slipping off, slipping off. It really was a difficult time for me. However, I think the only reason I got through it was because of the support. People bring to me, Ms. Miller and my guidance counselor. The fact that they told me you're bright and you're special and it drove me and encouraged me. They told me never to quit and never let your dreams end at the corner of Sedgwick Avenue. I don't think I would be where I am today. And I wish my brother could have gone on the journey with me as well. By the time she was in the eighth grade, Omarina had achieved near perfect attendance. 
and had an average in the 90s. Who agrees and why? Or Marina? Because when you solve negative B over 2A to get the vertex. Soon she began working on applications to some of the nation's best high schools. I thought that was your best essay. Read it to me again. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Typically, young adults look upon a political figure or someone in their life for guidance and support. I, on the other hand, seem to find this inspiration within a black and white street sign. Imprinted on the signs are the words, one way. It taunts me with the inevitable reminder that coming in is not the obstacle, but making it out. I don't think that me and my brother are in the same road, and I think he fell off, and that's really sad. <laughs> the way you take me to school is important. He didn't, and that's why we're going on different paths, I guess. Any school can use this system to keep kids on track. And what's going to vary from school to school is, is the extent they're going to need to recruit an outside second shift of adults to help. And that's going to really just depend on the sheer number of kids. Middle School 244 reallocated their resources, hiring fewer school aides, redistributing responsibilities among the teachers, and hiring an additional counselor. Now there is an adult assigned to help every at-risk student. Ready? Court, start them off. Louder than that, let's go. You're a small group, so you need to make sure that you sound like something. When I came to the school, my opinion about school did change. Before, I felt that school was a waste of time. Before I came here, I used to, didn't like learning a lot. I used to, you know, like watching TV, like going on the computer. When I wake up and I know I have to go to school in the morning, I have something to look forward to. I like that I can go to a teacher when I need help. My hobby is researching more history, armies. I am proud of myself because from last year, in last year in April, I wasn't doing, I was doing really bad. And now in, 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 in April, I'm doing really good. These are some of the success stories at Middle School 244. But even this school can't help all their at-risk students. And in America's high poverty schools, there are few intervention programs like the one at Middle School 244. That's what makes it so interesting on my brother. I think that's what I would be. I would be not in the school, and I think I would be, I wouldn't care. And the fact that I would get into a college wouldn't be that big of a deal. And the fact that I go on to high school, that wouldn't matter to me. I can get my GED later, that's what I would say. But chances are Omarina won't be settling for a GED. She's just found out she's been accepted at nine high schools, including an elite boarding school in Massachusetts. Oh, Marina, I'm so excited for you. So what did you decide? Which school did you choose? After giving it a lot of thought, I went with Brooks. So are you excited? Yeah. I'm I know really I am. <laughs> How does it feel, Miss Miller? It's very humbling, um, and I'm incredibly proud of your accomplishments. Miller, you're gonna be crying. Oh, come on, stop it. <laughs> Omarina Cabrera is on her way to graduating. But across the country, thousands of students remain at risk, hidden in the data. this and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's Fast Times at West Philly High is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Frontline is also available for download on iTunes.